So, I watched Boy Kills World. I got something to say. I think I owe Madam Web an apology. Call it the calling. They're all gonna watch and cheer as you die. Cash Station, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're talking Boy Kills World. Now, I'll be honest. I really had no expectations for way into this film. I did a trailer reaction. I thought it looked bonkers, crazy, full of action, some decent humor. That's kind of what I got. Before we get to nitty gritty, let me get all my pros before I get to the cons. The first pro I have is this. There's a couple of characters that I can't remember the names of that I like. I liked one of the uh, sisters of the film of the rich family and the bald guy from Stranger Things. I don't remember his name. Unfortunately, I just don't, okay? The first part of this movie, the first act, with the two things that actually we get, I did quite enjoy. I expected this to basically be kind of like what Borderlands would be, where it's super like dry, dark humor, mixed with a lot of fat, crazy action involved, okay? We get that in so much more. Now, again, I also love the visuals as well. I thought the visual, the way the movie looked, visually speaking, looked absolutely fantastic to me, okay? And overall, I thought it was a solid 6 out of 10 before we get to the second act and the third act of this film, okay? Uh, the boy, I mean, the voice in his head did annoy me at some parts in the film. And I saw that it's like he wanted to be this kind of heroistic character where he wanted to just go win, take charge of the situation, and fight constantly. And there's so many ironic moments where like he just grabs a gun, goes to try to shoot it, and then just can't, then has to use his fist the whole time, which was hilarious to me. And there are some really great, funny, dark humor moments. Okay, there's a couple of kills I quite enjoyed. And... Just like there's this one time, I won't give you any context, where so basically there's a scene in the mansion where the boy um just decides to just go through all these these minions to get to this one particular goal he has, if you will. The funny thing is that the goal he thinks he just not reached, he didn't. And the and the reactions to what he thought he reached was just hilarious to me. So again, the two characters in the film, the woman who basically hosts the, the calling. And the ball guy from Stranger Things are the two characters I like the most. Not much depth is given to them, unfortunately. They're just basically the one-dimensional characters you really think they're going to be. And what? So, the ball guy, I think, was my favorite character in the whole film because, A, he was very sarcastic throughout the whole time. His jokes, some of his jokes did land for me. And how he just did not care about what was going on. He didn't care what his family wanted, what the objective was. He just wanted it all to finally end. And to some degree, he actually gives the boy some tools to help make that necessary, okay? And the woman in this film is just so over the top. And I honestly quite enjoyed her. And I wish she was more in the film, unfortunately, which she's not. So, that are my positives of the film and let me get to the negatives the biggest negative is there's way too much action in this film there's way too much okay and i know you don't believe when i say this you're probably like cash you're bugging i'm not i swear to god there's so much action in this film i got a legit headache out of okay like i rewatched man of web two times i watched it the first time with my other reaction i watched it again with gabby and if you ask me right now between argyle man of web and this movie which one i would rather watch again i have to say man of web. i know i know i know i know i'm in comments i know okay i'm being dead serious man and web is by every standard matchable a terrible movie i'm not disagreeing with that fact at all okay it's a terrible movie but at least from start to finish it was palatable for me like i didn't sit there and really go on my phone much and this film my first time watching it i literally in the second act of this film because again there was so much action right so what happens is there's a tv show uh being hosted on the broadcast right and it's like this the calling is basically i didn't explain that right the calling is a concept where this family gets 12 people to fight for their life okay and they don't really explain anything behind it so don't even bother asking me more about that okay so basically there's the ball guy i, I don't remember his name and another guy go around to get people and that doesn't end well unfortunately but they get a couple people for this uh this game show whatever right and there's really nothing to it it's just straight up the people they found from the streets wake up and they're literally just are killed off immediately i'm not gonna even get not just not a spoiler because it don't matter at all and it's just like there's a bunch of killing in this film a bunch of violence going on but there's no substance behind there's no meat behind it which means you just see people get axed and killed and chopped and sliced and shot and everything 
but because there's nothing behind it, you don't really care about anything you're seeing, right? And I mentioned in my ethnic reaction, I felt like that the, the this film was a little racist. So the black guy in this film, the only black character in this film, right? There's another guy, but I think he's a spec or something. I might, I could be wrong. But there's a black character in this film that I'm not joking with you. And this is no exaggeration. My dad will testify to this. When he spoke dialogue, and again, because of the boy, the character itself, the black character spoke gibberish. You could understand what he was saying, but you're to make out what he was saying the whole time. He, either he spoke too fast or he didn't make any sense. I don't know why. Maybe that was supposed to be a hilarious dark joke. If it was, I didn't laugh once, nor did I understand why it was happening for, okay? It's like the third act of this film, when a big climax, long fight and see what happens, it was the most drawn out thing ever between these three characters, and I will give you context, are fighting, literally hiding, jazz, being kicking, throwing every single thing you can physically do to cause a human harm, it's happening in a matter of seconds, right? Humans, you know, someone's having their head hit against the skull, they're having their, their back torn apart, really slicing open the body parts physically. You know, they're sitting there breaking someone's arm, neck, everything, and they're still going. It's not realistic anymore. It's just cartoonish. Like even in the first act, when a boy fights this this person named Dave, which is the only reason. I know it's Dave because of a clip, right? It's like this guy gets his, it, literally his neck literally turned. It breaks his neck. That's everything horribly imagined to a human being. And he's still going. And for me, right, I love action and violence like every other person does. But to me specifically, if you don't have any substance behind it, right? Like if, for example, right, if, if whenever in the third act, when the fight happens, right? Say, say for example, when the third fight happens and something happens to where our character gets really badly beaten, we take a break, talk, motivate, and then go forward, right? That would be fantastic. Okay, you got beat the first time. Let's try again, but more co coordinated. That doesn't happen. I, I, and it's a minor spoiler, okay? It's a minor spoiler. Basically, like I said, two characters fight this one person and they're trying to be coordinated. They're not. And for the next 10 to 15 minutes, it's just constant back and forth. One person trying to beat them, the other person gets injured it was very very annoying okay and that's every other fight scene by the way most fights it's basically the boy does win unfortunately i said unfortunately because i prefer a story or a movie or show where a character tries to fight his way through the top but does get you know his butt handed to him a couple times and has to go through different obstacles to get there that's what makes a movie so great to me but you just have a feel to where you know a character is able to go through the entire film he gets touched, yes. He gets a little hits here and there, yes. But overall, he's able to win every fight he's in. I don't care anymore. I don't, like, to me, he has plot armor. I need to get stabbed. Doesn't matter. He'll just make it out like he does every other fight. You know what I'm saying? So, enough of me rambling, okay? Again, my pros of this film were visually look good. Like, two characters in this film out of everyone else. Because no one matters in this film, by the way. Let me just make that very clear, okay? No one in this film matters. Every character is forgettable. The, the writing was terrible. But to me, this film, and by the way, if flopped this film boy kills well flopped not because of me because my thing doesn't matter but it had a, bu a budget of i think 68 million dollars or 28 million dollars and it didn't even make past two million dollars opening weekend which is not good of course okay so again the drawn out fight sequences the terrible dialogue, terrible writing, characters don't matter, and overall horny and silliness to it all. By the way, the one more thing, let me make sure this very quick, okay, for those who are wondering, okay, so you know how when you watch a good movie, when there's a moment between two characters, whatever it may be, when there's a moment between a father and son, how you have that moment of, you know, happiness, excitement, and sadness all at once, and it really hits you in the guts, it hits you in the feels, like, oh, yay, father and son are finally reconnecting after a couple of years apart, how be how amazing, right? They try to pull that crap off in this film, and and it doesn't even stick the landing. It's like a minute of like, oh my God, you know, you're home. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to give away anything, by the way. And the next scene, for whatever reason, is literally just, yeah, literally is a character crying, you're home and all that. And the next, literally, not even the next scene, the next minute is, okay, get rid of him now. So we just did this whole thing of trying to have an emotional moment. This should have been ruined by saying, let's kill him. In the same exact scene, with no real build-up to it, no real revelation to it, other than the fact that, oh, he's not himself, clearly. How would you know? What? Like, the things that the plot twist in this in this film is so predictable, I can guarantee you, Everett and Jaren, Jaren, I'm calling you out, by the way. Everett and Jaren, I can bet you $5. They can guess the whole thing. So if I get in a little bit of sprinkles here and there, but what... 
was going on. They're like, oh yeah, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, exactly. So this film didn't land it for me. I wish the guy did. And I wanted to like this film so much. There was so much small moments. This one I really liked and enjoyed. The visual aspect of it, the pacing, all that. But unfortunately, like I said, due to the overdrawn fight sequences, poor dialogue, poor story choices, it being way too long, I had to give Boy Kills World a 2 out of 10. A 2 out of 10, I would not recommend this whatsoever. I wouldn't recommend you stream it. Like, if you want to see a crap load of fight sequences with no substance behind it, just for craps and giggles, by all means, put this on. But for me personally, I can't tell you to watch it. I know it looks good to you, but I promise you, if you listen to me this one time, you'll understand. The first act, not so bad. The second act, eh, but the third the third act, it's just too much. So, guys, Station, please do me a favor. If you've seen Boy Kills World, please let me know in the comments below. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Why, why not? And of course, what was your favorite part about it? What you, would you do like least about it? And as always, thank you for watching. Peace out, casual, stay friendly. Have a good one, y'all. And again, I'll see you in my next review of The Fall Guy with Pops Cash this Saturday. 